Portuguese colonialism has been a major factor in African countries since the 15th century. According to Smitha, they used the island of Principe as a foothold to access the mainland. The Portuguese used this base to establish a fort on the African mainland near the Kwanzaa at Masagano. They used this fort to capture slaves for trade. A military stalemate developed between the Ndongo people and the Portuguese until Luiz Mendes de Vasconcelos hired Ing Bengala mercenaries and forced the king of Angola, Mbande, Queen Nzinga's brother, out of the capital into refugee in the Kwanzaa River. This was called the Battle of Mbumbi. By the time the Portuguese attacked Mbumbi, the Portuguese numbered 40,000 and the Ndongo numbered 30,000. The, the Portuguese force won the battle, pillaged Mbumbi, and took slaves. King Angola called his sister back into the country, and together they negotiated a peace treaty with the Portuguese. After King Angola's death in 1624, Queen Nzinga took power. The Portuguese also attempted to gain power through Angola a Ari, who contested Nzinga's rule. This led to a civil war which forced Nzinga into the kingdom of Matamba. Hey guys, my name is Veronica and I'm here to talk to you guys about Queen Nzinga's early life. Because we always wonder how a great ruler, king or queen, started out. Because they're never given the throne as a baby and, and is like, here you go baby, have a nation, go ahead, do what you want to do. No. Well, there's always like a backstory or an event that made them not the ruler they are and the person they are. So Queen Nzinga was born in 1583 to Nogoya Sambavi and Konkoli Kumbabi in the kingdom of Notambi. Matamba, in which the kingdom was under the Portuguese settlement of Angolia, and she died on December, December 17, 1663. She had three siblings, two sisters, Kofi and Matambi, and one brother, Matambi. Nzinga was the favorite child of her father, so he would take her to the war, give her administrative exposure. But around 1610, her father was dethroned, and her brother took over. But when her brother took over, he didn't really like Nzinga. He thought that she was a challenge to the throne, so he was like, leave the kingdom. But in 1617, Nzinga was called back to the kingdom by her brother again, who wanted her to meet the Portuguese to secure Zongos, the nation of the kingdom, freedom from the Portuguese. During the meeting, Nzinga was astonished and neglected with her political and diplomatic tactic, immune and self-assured. So the Portuguese governor would agree to her terms in leading to a treaty of equal terms. But in 1622, she converted by her own choice to a Catholic because she wanted to like, boost the peace treaty with the Portuguese. However, when the peace treaty was made, there were still signatures of the Portuguese being like, yeah, we agree to the peace treaty. But the Portuguese never honored it because they still continued to take slaves and valuable items from the kingdom. Unable to stop them and losing the war, Nzinga's brother committed suicide in 1622, and she took over as queen, which led her to become the ruler that she was. Thank you. Queen Nzinga was a magnificent woman. Following the death of her brother, she took a leap in becoming the queen of Matamba. Her brother, Ngola Mbandi, committed suicide after an overwhelming threat of Portugal people invaded Matamba. Nzinga took charge when threatened by the Portuguese. Her people fled west and stood their ground to create a safe sanctuary for slave and Portugal-trained African soldiers. Nzinga created a safe place that allowed diverse people to reside in comfort. Queen Nzinga and the people of Matamba created a peace treaty with the Portuguese, and when it wasn't upheld and Angola committed suicide, Nzinga took over and declared war. Thus marks the beginning of the end. The war took place in Angola, where the African people fought for their rights against the Portuguese. She succeeded at many things, such as the small victory of limiting the Portuguese colony at Luanda from a large portion to just a few square miles. Her three main goals were to stop the war, she wanted to take the Portuguese from their diplomatic recognition, and she wanted more profitable trade with Luanda and the Europeans. During her time of reigning, she had multiple conflicts involving indigenous groups. The Portuguese became a problem when they began trying to expand into African kingdoms and were enslaving African people. 
She created new rules and made multiple successes in bettering her kingdom. During the war against the Portuguese, Nzinga not only fought alongside her people, but also offered up her kingdom, Matamba, as a safe place for slaves that escaped and African soldiers that ran away from Portugal. Queen Nzinga also used alliances to assert her power. She formed a powerful alliance with Portugal's biggest rival, the Dutch. Throughout the 16th century, when Nzinga was in power, maritime trade was at its height, and the Dutch and Portuguese were each trying to make their claims to Africa. This put Nzinga in a very tough diplomatic position. It was hard for her to cut off the Portuguese slave trade, because then Matamba would lose a valuable trading ally, but if she continued to let the trade happen, more of her people would die from it. In the aftermath of the war, Angola became a commercial power, due to its convenient location as well as Queen Nzinga's resilience and refusal to give up. Even after her life ended, her influence continued. Her use of guerrilla warfare techniques against the Portuguese inspired the Angolan revolutions that eventually led to Angola's independence from Portuguese colonization in 1975. Queen Nzinga is recognized as a brilliant military strategist, who is a strong female leader and a catalyst for change in the fight against oppression in a male-dominated society.